Welcome to the Dudley Unplugged podcast, a show that gets to the heart of plumbing. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Dudley Unplugged. And today we're going to be talking about the growing numbers of women uh, who are choosing plumbing and heating as a career. I'm your host, Mark Morris, and we are joined on Dudley Unplugged by Helena and uh, Helena from Pink Plumbing and Karen from Casgas. So welcome both. Hi. Hi. How are we doing today? Yeah, good, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Do you manage to get here okay without sort of going through any sort of floods or anything? Um, yeah, pretty much. For some reason it brought me the back way and it threw loads of like <laughs> like country lanes. I didn't even think it was like that round here. You're from round here, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it is like that. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> thought it was... Yeah, I'm surprised, but yeah, I got here, okay. Yeah, I drove through quite a few points. I came down one point, there was sort of water on one side of the road, water on the other, and I thought, well, I'm going to aim for the middle because that could be a hole and I could end up in Narnia or somewhere, so I really don't want to go down there. I, thought, I, I envisaged a scene from like Titanic as the car went into the water and <laughs> never fear. to be seen again, yeah. Yeah, my heart rate just rises going through floods. Yeah, it's like the car just goes all over the place in yeah. the water. Yeah, it's not really nice at all. So, um, so just one, one question, so how long have you both been plumbers? Or Mix gas up. engineers in, uh, in terms. Yeah. Uh, me, I've been a gas engineer for 25 years now. Wow. Um, yes. So I started off with um, plumbing at college and then um, went on to do an apprenticeship at British Gas, uh, which I was with them for 22 years. And now I've got my own business, um, Cas Gas, which I've been doing more plumbing as well as gas engineer and been doing that for the last three years. Excellent. H, what about you? Um, so... I've been doing gas for roughly a year, um, and then plumbing five to six years. Nice. So, so how, what drove you both to sort of look at plumbing and heating as a career choice? Because I mean, twenty five years ago, it's probably quite unusual. Yeah, I yeah, I sort of left school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I my mum said I got to stay in full time education because I didn't want to stay on. So I went to the local technical college, and I actually fancied being an electrician. So I went along, I looked at the electrician's course and I thought, that looks a bit boring. <laughs> so I was like, I quite fancy the plumbing though. So yeah, I just, uh, I did that at college two years and yeah, and that's, and I've not looked back really, so. Well, was, was, was there many other? Um, no, no. You were the only no, female in the group. I was the only group. female, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, the difficulty was when you do a course at college, you have to obviously try and get work experience. Yeah. And they tried to get me onto a site, but None of the sites had female toilet facilities at that point. Oh. So I was like, I'm, I ain't bothered. I'll yeah, just yeah. go and use a portaloo. But they know they wouldn't let me go on a site. So I had to do my work experience in a plumber's merchant. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> I suppose that's not something you really think about, I suppose, you know, ironically going for a plumber's course and there isn't any sort of toilets is quite yeah. quite sort of not something you'd uh, yeah I find it's a bit unusual now you would think that's unusual yeah yeah but like I say at the time it didn't bother me you know I was like 18 I went first yeah. but yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't let me go on site so yeah finding work experience is quite difficult but on the flip side of that because I was a woman on a plumbing course they did get me opening things like local plumbing like a new plumbing store that opened uh, they wanted me to go and cut the ribbon <laughs> oh, nice. so I was a little celebrity oh, cool. <laughs> H, how about you? What, what drove you H to go and do um, this so my dad is an electrician okay um, it so you went I ain't doing electrics I used to go to work with him um, but no it didn't interest me in the slightest um, but I've always been like the hands on type of person and yeah uh, my mum's mate husband I think it was. Um, he said, why don't you come with me for a day? So I had to go, flooded my first toilet <laughs> on the first day, yeah. Um, and then from there, enrolled into college, made sure I liked it first. Uh, did college, my level two, and then we went, did my apprenticeship at Bovis Homes. Had the same problem with toilets, so... Why? The ladies' toilet was used by managers and site, ag site agents. Okay, right. <laughs> We all shared this one key, and yeah, the, I had to even queue... For the toilet at times. It's, uh, yeah, it wasn't great. But um, yeah, and then now I'll just do my own stuff now. <laughs> so so you, you both have gone out on your own. Uh, what yeah. was the what drove you to actually want to go out on your own? 
I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, like I say, I worked for British Gas for 22 years and I had a good career with them. You know, I learned a lot. Um, but it got, um, towards the end of it, they got, um, they were trying to change all our careers. Uh, sorry, all our contracts. And I'm um, I'm a single parent. So for me, the new um, contract they wanted us to sign wouldn't have suited me as right. a single parent. Um, so... I just, yeah, I made that decision there that if they pushed through with it and they went through with fire and rehire. So um, basically, if you didn't sign the contract, they'd dismiss you and then you'd be re-engaged on this new contract. So I knew if it went all the way to that point, I wouldn't, um, you mm. know, get, come back. So um, that's when I put things in place, start setting up my own company and, and sort of went from there. It must have been a quite big step to think about for both of you to think about setting up on your own because it's quite a brave move, really. Yeah, yeah, especially because obviously, like I say, I'm only um, I'm, my son's only um, you know I, I'm his mom and we, there were no one else paying the bills, just yep. me and him. So for for me, if it didn't work out, I wouldn't get my mortgage paid. So it was a big decision, yeah. um, and it was you know really scary at the time. But to be fair, it you know it worked out, and I've not looked back. Hey, what about you? Um, so I took the plunge during COVID. <laughs> Bit of a risky move, but um, I was working at my local co-op at the same time. And then jobs were coming in. And then I was furloughed from my apprenticeship. So I had to sort of like, in a weird way, three jobs on the go. Okay. And it just got too much. So once I finished my apprenticeship, it was like, a, I don't need the co-op. That was more of like a safety barrier because yeah. it's just on the road and I was getting paid every day. And one well, every day, but I wish. Um, but every month. And then, um, yeah, I just took the plunge from there instead and just... Went out. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I, it, like I say, it's, it's a big step going out on your own because it's a bit like stepping into the unknown, isn't it? You don't know yeah. how it's going to pan out. But uh, that, that's, um, you know, especially during COVID as well, or as COVID's yeah. coming out of you because that kind of upset the the apple got on everything. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's an amazing bit. But I, I was doing some research and I was looking at the Office of National Statistics data and um, it, say, it says on there that only 2.4% of plumbers are female. So that's not a lot. Of numbers out there, um, so I mean, does that surprise you that the numbers are that that low in terms of the, the share of female plumbers and engineers to uh, to males? Um, I don't no, I don't think it's surprising because we're out there. Like you know, you don't come across many female um, plumbers, but um, obviously, social media has brought us together, it does help. Um, yeah. and we see like we've made friends through social mm-hmm. media, female gas engineers, plumbers, um, and we're really good friends. So. We've got that backup now, but when you're out there in the bad world on your own, you don't come across females, do you? No, it's very slim. It's like I was saying, like, it's one of those things that you feel like there's loads of you because you're on social media. Um, but obviously, if you step away from social media, you I don't know another one. I don't know any other yeah. female, but, um, yeah, it's uh, I mean, slim. Would, <laughs> would you... Would you from your, the experience that you've got now, would you recommend um, that females look to go into plumbing and heating? Yeah, <laughs> straight yeah, up. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. So it's, it's been a good experience overall for yourselves, yeah. despite the toilet issue at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I would definitely encourage, um, you know, females to do it. And funnily enough, I, I went to do a job for a friend I'd not seen for a few years, um, and she got two daughters that knew me, and I'd done some work for them previously, fitted radiators in the house, and both her daughters now are both at college, one's being an electrician and one's being a plumber. Nice. And she said that the main influence was because they'd seen me doing the plumbing and, wow. and fitting radiators. And that, to me, even if you just change one yeah. Yeah, person and encourage one person to go for it, I think that's amazing. Yeah, that really is. A, well, that's inspiring, isn't yeah, it? For yeah. People? yeah. I suppose people imitate what they see, and if you don't see any, it's, it's hard now. Like say we you will see more people start more people coming into it. But I mean, have you found attitudes to female plumbers and engineers has changed over the years? Has it got easier from even from even on site or to when you knock on the door to come in and you know Joe Bloggs answers the door <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, and I called the plumber. What are you doing here? You know. So is, is, have you seen any of that change? I would say no, no. For twenty five years, not not so much now. I work for myself because. They know Kaz Gas is turning up and yeah. they know that I'm female. But for 22 years, even from day dot to the 22nd year, I knocked on doors and had the same response. Oh, 
You're a female. <laughs> oh, how long have they been letting women do this? <laughs> yeah. Letting women yeah. do this, yeah. yeah. Honestly, you get them or you just, it becomes water off duck's back, doesn't yeah. it? But you do get all the comments that, you know, you just think. But yeah, it's just. It's just what people, it's not, um, people just expect to see a man. And we've yeah. all, it's not um, discriminate. You know, we, we all expect to see men in certain jobs. So when you do see a woman, it's even nice as surprise. a woman in a man's world, you're still like, oh, a woman, brilliant, yeah. you know. Well, I, I, I'll be honest, I'd probably be surprised if I opened the door and there was a female plumber on the doorstep. Yeah. Because <laughs> outside of yourselves and um, uh, Becca, I, I, I haven't met another female plumber. So it's uh, it's nice to know that you are out there. Um, and I suppose it's 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 one of those, it's a societal change as things go on. Mm, you yeah. know, a lot more women are doing different types of jobs and men are doing different types of jobs. But um, I suppose there's some bastions that still are, on this one clearly is still male-dominated. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, obviously, you'd recommend that women. So, if you, if someone came to you and said, "How do I become a plumber engineer? How, what, how would you? What would you recommend? What path would you recommend that they go down?" College and apprenticeship. Yeah, is that the best way? That's the best way. Yeah, learning on the job. Yeah, is the best way. Getting hands on with it, knowing everything, getting passed down, even like little tips from like other plumbers. It's the little things that can make all the difference. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It is. I mean, learning on the job. When I went to college, I walked out of college with a qualification, but I couldn't get a job because I had no experience. And rightly so. I wouldn't have felt comfortable just going out plumbing, you yeah. know. With on a, your own. Yeah. <laughs> um, so having the apprenticeship with British Gas, um, you were learning in a classroom, but also on the job, um, seeing things in real life. So yeah. you were learning the classroom and then seeing it, it, it make it it makes it make sense yeah. rather than trying to, you know, visualise it in the classroom when you're trying to learn stuff. So yeah, I agree with that definitely. Yeah, I mean I've I've been a I've, I've tried a little bit of plumbing here and there, you know, as in I can change a tap just <laughs> yeah. about or a washer and even then I'm struggling, okay, okay, I'm not sure which is the washer bit that goes on here. <laughs> you know, I, I think it, I even double check at times. <laughs> it, it, it's, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind, I, I have no problems with re putting some wires in or moving some wire in around, you know, or putting them in plugs, switches, quite happy to do that, even though that could probably kill me with a turn <laughs> yeah. the electric on. Um, but when it comes to water, I'm a bit scared because I think the water, if I flood anything, then, you know, my wife is going to kill me <laughs> but i don't know i don't know it just seems weird in my mind that that is far more riskier to do the water than i mean i'll tell you one story i was trying to change the the, the taps on the bath and uh bath taps i've been told are a bit more hard to change than uh, than sink taps so i thought i'd done it up but i was in the house on my own and the stopcock was downstairs <laughs> so i had to go downstairs turn on the water, run back up the top of the stairs just to see if it was leaking and it was still every time and there was more water coming out and I, it was absolutely not. I called a plumber in the end. I mean, yeah, God yeah. knows what he thought of me at the end when he came up. I was like, yeah, oh, some idiots left the taps like this. I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> the thing is, that's the funny thing because even as plumbers, we have to do that. When we've done something and the stop yeah. cocks downstairs, you do that run upstairs because yeah. you, you just... Just in case. Yeah, you do. <laughs> even though you're confident, you know what you're doing. They could be like, oh, what if I've missed them all? What? So you do, you do the run anyway. Way. It's nice when the customer helps, though. Yeah. <laughs> when they get involved, yeah. <laughs> I mean, from all the years that you've been doing plumbing and, and heating, that is, is there a, is there a story that sticks in your mind that um, you'll never forget, or you think, oh, I didn't wish I hadn't done that? I mean, we were speaking to Liam and Pablo earlier, and they, they had a couple of stories each of mistakes and things that they'd done. So, is there anything that sort of sticks in your mind from the, the years that you've been doing this that sort of uh, is is you know something you'll never forget? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you learn every day on this job. You never stop learning. I think every experience you have is a learning curve. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's been plenty of disasters, you know, <laughs> water through the ceiling, you know, you're changing a pump in an airing cupboard and the um, valves haven't shut off. And, yeah, you just – and then the customer shouts up, oh, I've got some water coming through the ceiling. Is that okay? Is that normal? <laughs> Yeah, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> People panic though. I mean, it's not it's not a big deal. A little bit of water through the ceiling, but yeah, it is. Um, yeah, that's probably that's happened on various occasions. Uh, I've got, got one story. Oh, yeah, yeah um, it was when I was working with Squires Plumbing, and it was during COVID, and it was like a block block of students' accommodation, and it was the soil stack was leaking, and no matter how many signs you put. Don't use toilets. Do not use the toilets. Do not flush down this one stack. Do not flush it. Literally, as we put on the last fit in, 
someone flushed it. And it was one of those, like, milli of a second. It was so close. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Did you get what? No. Oh, but no. there was, like, all the insulation was just covered. Oh. I had to take it all out and put it in a bag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it was great. So it wasn't the, oh, dearie me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I was heaving every like every video I was doing. I was like, no, no, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Should have made him come down and clean his mess up. Uh, or her mess. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it's, I mean, that I suppose is a sort of, a, it's, a, it's a hazard, I suppose, of the job that you're going to fix a toilet. And I imagine some of them probably aren't in that good a condition. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I try not to do too much of the dirty waste side. I tend to sit, stick to the I don't, clean I switch waste. off. I don't mind it. You don't? No. I don't mind it, no. It's okay. I think when I'm on a job and I'm getting paid for it, it's okay. But if it's like, if I'm out and about, I'm like, I'm not touching that. No. Yeah. It's not, no. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I remember just like when I first started working on toilets, really, I used to be like, oh, you know, get home I need to get this straight in the wash all my clothes <laughs> I've lent over the toilet but you sort of yeah. become a little bit numb to it don't you yeah you know I mean as long as it's you know cleanish but yeah if you overthink it you just end up yeah yeah you just would constantly be doing it going home changing your clothes and <laughs> scrubbing yeah. nails yeah <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's a job I'd want to do <laughs> I mean, there's um, there's some jobs that I, you know, I don't want to get my hands dirty and stuff, but there's uh, I think maybe I'll draw the line at that. Maybe <laughs> I mean you're, you're far braver person than I am on there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't sound pretty there. there. I mean, I, I not toilet related, but uh, I mean, but I will say on on, on toilet related, I worked in a cinema, a multi screen cinema, and uh, people think that men's toilets are messy and dirty. Nothing compared to the <laughs> horrors that you'd go into I've in the female this toilets. Before, I have actually. heard that as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, it was like, oh my god, I just couldn't believe the. I'm not even going to go into the stories <laughs> in there, but yeah, yeah, that that was an eye opener. But we had to go. It was almost like you feel like I need to close this off. It's just terrible. <laughs> yeah, so, funny That's enough, someone who worked <laughs> for a nightclub said the same thing, just the same thing to me last week, and I was surprised because obviously, yeah. I'm yeah. a clean lady myself. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah it's just one. I mean, I, I'll never. You just don't, you don't forget that. I think that I always think that it's going to go in there smelling a perfume, and it's going to be all nice, <laughs> and it's going to be bird sounds and candles. Flowers, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, flowers. Yeah, I walked into, it, I was like. Oh, <laughs> oh wow this is horrendous yeah <laughs> but yeah so yeah that's a bit of a nightmare on there but um obviously being being a plumber nowadays is probably different to to when you started before um with a lot there's probably a lot more um sort of positive attitudes to to women in the workplace now than what there probably has been um have you found that uh, even fellow plumbers rather than sort of the general public are more sort of quite happy to sort of have you guys around and um, things like that. Is it, is it, is it, I imagine it was probably a closed door club at one point, but is it sort of a lot more sort of within the plumbing teams themselves, a lot more sort of open? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I was quite lucky because British Gas were always encouraging females to come and um, work for them. So I wasn't a loner um, and there was other females there, but um you always got the odd person that never really thought you should be there and they'd make the odd comment. And yeah. that. But, you know, generally the team on a whole were really good. And um, I actually, I got promoted to be a manager when, and they moved me to Coventry. I work in Leicester. I worked in so Leicester. So you got sent to Coventry. I got sent to Coventry, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I managed this whole new team that I'd never met before. Um, that's where I met Leah. Yeah. Um, yes, so yes. one of our uh, female um, plumber friends um yeah so I was dreading it because I thought wow what they're gonna think a woman's coming in you know because you always feel like you've got to prove yourself yeah. that little bit more but to be fair they were all fantastic and they they took me in and you know yeah they were a really good team so I think sometimes the barriers are in your own head rather than other people so but that's probably due to the limit you know the, the small amount of negativity you do get and you do have it does make you that little bit like, oh, how's it going to go down? Are they going to take it? Mm. So, yeah, it's you do get it. And it's the same now on, on social media platforms. You post things, you put things up, and you get questioned by other male plumbers that yeah. you know. Yeah. If you were a male, they probably wouldn't, wouldn't be saying it. that to you or trying to question what you're doing or Why put are you down, doing it yeah, that way? Yeah, and it's like... It's like a power thing, but you just have to learn to ignore that, don't yeah. you? 
I mean, one thing I'll say, I mean, meeting yourselves and the uh, the, the, uh, the other female ambassadors, we'll come on to that in a, in a second, is the positive attitude that you guys all have. You're all absolutely <laughs> delighted about being plumbers. Um, and that's, that's it's surprising that people... I do like saying it. Yeah, <laughs> people, people are happy to be doing their job, which I thought was actually quite, quite surprising, really, because a lot of people do the job because, oh, it's just a job I do. <laughs> But all of you have got such a very positive attitude, which is sort of, I don't know where that comes from in terms it's, of how that is. It's weird. It's like my mates, when we used to go on a night out, they used to play a game. They go up to someone in the bar and be like, guess what she does as a job? Like That used to be a game. And I'm like, why is that a game? It's just my job. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh... Did anybody guess? No. <laughs> I got the drinks. <laughs> That's all. What, what, sort of, what sort of weird and wonderful concoctions do they come up with for jobs they thought you might be doing? Oh, you probably Anything. don't want to ask her that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that, was, that wasn't such a clever thought process there. Um, you seen her when she goes out? <laughs> She's hot. <laughs> um, I, I, have, you, have, there, have you found that there's any sort of initiatives or programmes aimed now at getting more um, sort of females involved in plumbing and eating that, um, that the government's running or that companies are running or anything like that? Is, is there anything out there that um, if someone wanted to come into it, they could use that as a yeah okay that's a way in i know british gas were um um they decided that they wanted 50 percent females for the next intake of um uh, um apprentices last year i don't know if it happened or not but i know that's what their aim was um and i think um for myself i've always been like you've got to um make it because i think the main reason there's not more women in in plumbing and, and jobs like ours is because they don't see it as an option necessarily, even when they're growing up. And I think you've got to sort of get in young and let them know young that they can do yeah, this so sort of job. To do, yeah. um, because I went into a job um, while I was working for British Gas and there was a boy in there who was about three years old. And even he said, but mum, it's a, it's a lady, you know, and that to me shocked me because yeah. he's three. Like, why has he got a preconception? But that's why, I mean, you know, I've always been, I've always said, like, I'd love to make a cartoon with a female in trades, you know, oh, like, you know, Bob the Builder. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, I think that would be a good way of getting more girls switched on from an early age to think that might be an option as a career mm. for you. I suppose as long as it's um, the, the opportunities there for everybody, whether people want to do it or not, that comes down to a personal choice then, doesn't mm. it? But as long as there's no barriers to opportunity and you know, if anyone wants to become a plumber, they have the option to do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're on a girls' group and there's a lot of apprentices in that mm -hmm. and they do get a lot of aggro and some of them struggle with that. And yeah. I think you see that, don't you know, with the yeah. girls group that we're on that you know some of the messages that come through it's not easy for girls to be in this world and I think it depends on your who you're working for where you're working and that support because sometimes they have no support and they're quite um they go through a lot you know so quite it's replaceable yeah yeah way. Which but it's sad. not, I think you have to be quite strong and have to want to do it yeah. to go through that and, and come out the other side. I suppose having um, people they can look up to who have actually been, I mean, 25 years is a long time to have been mm -hmm. in any particular yeah. job. That's something that I suppose when they're looking, thinking, yeah, actually it is possible. And, you know, there's people out there that can do it. So I suppose it's great that you are part of a group that um, allows people to see the, the potentialities of what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's quite, that's quite you I know. Think, I, sorry, go on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, like, everyone's journey is, I think, everyone sees the end point. Like, everyone can see Kaz being on her own and doing everything and, like, smashing it. But I don't think everyone realises that everyone, most females still go through each barrier to get to that point. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what, I think sometimes the girls in the group will just say, oh, but she's doing that, she's doing that. And you're like, yeah, but... I didn't just get there. Yeah. I've had yeah. a rocky road to get yeah, there at the same that's point. Fine. Yeah, and you're and you're likely to face certain objects as, yeah. as well as you go yeah. through it and just be prepared. I suppose people are prepared and and I suppose it's helping them along the way, which I suppose is it goes a long way for I mean, I suppose for anyone to to know that there is a, a pathway that, that they can do. I mean, it's great that you you know that you are part of that group because it's just something that adds extra support to everybody and Talking to groups, um, yourselves along with some others, have become sort of ambassadors for for Thomas Dudley Plumbing Products. Yeah. Um, so, do you me how did that happen? How did you uh, suddenly end up sort of uh, talking about Thomas Dudley Products? Which answer do you want? <laughs> um, okay, any, any well, answer you want to give is good. 
Pablo Astor. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's, yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. I mean, I mean pa- we had Pablo on earlier, and like I say he was a driving force behind the, the guys as well. So it's, um, you know, it, it's a great, great. If, if someone could, <laughs> could, could do that. Yeah. So I mean, like Pablo asked if you if you wanted to yeah. uh, to develop it. I mean, so. I mean, Pablo said, do you want to become an ambassador for Thomas? This is what we're doing. Did it? Ha- I'm assuming it appealed in some way that you, you thought it was a good well, idea. Well, he invited us to a factory tour to yeah. start with, and we all went down, didn't we? And yeah. we had a fab day. Yeah, um, you had to listen to me talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, met everyone, went around the factory and um, seen things in production, which was really good. Um, and then at the end of that, we were asked if we'd like to be ambassadors. And yeah. I think at that point, you know, seeing what, the company and you know the fact that it's uk manufactured and and the you know the employing people and it's just a real good company and you got a real good feel from and them, everyone knows you? the name yeah <laughs> yeah and you know i i was just like yeah there's no doubt about it i'd love to yeah i mean it's been great having you guys aboard it's i mean what what did you think of the factory obviously you went on the factory tour i mean oh yeah it's, it's how, fun <laughs> yeah it's, it's people's yeah. perceptions of how products come about because it's you know it's just a product it's done but actually yeah, seeing how yeah. it, how it's made and the people who actually have to make it it's, it's quite, it can be quite an eye-opener for some people yeah, yeah i find I that w- quite interesting yeah yeah i do I, enjoy a factory tour <laughs> i worked on the assembly line after i'd done my plumbing yeah. just while i was looking for a job and making light so it bought a little bit of that but no i love it i love seeing start to finish and even the robots that they've got yeah. making things I thought yeah. they were fascinating yeah it's always good when you see how the um, technology has helped do things or you know it takes I mean it takes machinery to pick the washers up and move them around and I mean I don't think you got to go to the foundry when you see all the molten metal getting poured no. in the foundry we've got there as well he's always quite a sight to be held as well but um it's interesting that most of the workforce at Thomas Dudley are, are, are females as well yeah so, yeah, yeah. You know, they're most of the pa- government Pablo on that line yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> making an absolute nightmare of it but it's just it's just quite amusing that the guys out there might be sort of a bit hesitant about having you know females on but they're installing products that are mostly made by females, yeah, so it's yeah. uh, it's quite it's quite. I think it's quite one of those um, one of the ironies for them if they have any objections to it. Actually, you're installing products that are mostly made by women. So, <laughs> but yeah, so you I mean you enjoyed the, the factory tour? Obviously, the guys loved having you guys around as well, which was good. So, is there anything that stuck out in your mind on the tour? Was it the, the robots or the people or what? Anything I think, particular? I think making, watching the ball cocks being made. Yeah. We were fascinated <laughs> with that, weren't we? We were talking to along. <laughs> we just said, yeah, come on, we're, we're moving on now. And we're like, yeah, we just want to see the end bit where they put the metal in. It was like, yeah, I could have stood there and watched that all day, to be yeah. fair. Yeah. We <laughs> loved that. It was good. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it, how some little things yeah. like that just sort of capture your attention. Yeah, yeah. So I want to see what happens to that next yeah. bit. I want to see what happens there. Because these are things I use every day. Well, not every yeah. day, but, you know, I do use them. So to see them actually being moulded and made and, yeah, it's really, really enjoyable. That's cool, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's... It's great that you know we've got some female. Like I say, with only literally a handful of female plumbers out there, to have you know four or five of you as uh, as ambassadors for Thomas Dudley is great for us. And it's, I think it hopefully we can push that out and sort of help to communicate that out to everybody that you know we we value women to do what they do in the plumbing industry and we can help move that message along in a positive way, um, which we, we think is you know quite important. And you know we, we're all. But from Thomas Duddy's point of view, you're all delighted that you're all on board and it's been great having you <laughs> and having you in, in the podcast for today. So, um, I mean, you know, hopefully we can act as an inspiration for the next generation yeah, of plumbers yeah. that come along. Because I think it's important because we still go to install them now. I don't know if yeah. you find this age where you go up to a stand and you might be with a couple of other males and you're asking questions and they're not even answering to you. Yeah, you get blanked and they talk to the men you know, like, hello, I'm here. Like, I'm a, I'm also a plumber. I'm also a gas engineer. But that's probably installer is one of the main things that I, I, you know you feel it. You feel yeah. like you're ignored. It's changed a over bit. the years. And my first one, I think, was 2019, and that was very male dominated to the point where I think it was like me. I think I saw maybe two other girls. That was it. And um, yeah, it got to the point where I was walking around and it was exactly the same. Yeah. And then they'd be like, "She's a plumber as well," and you're like. Oh yeah, they look at your badge and they're like, "Oh yeah." Then they start interesting because you're interested yeah. in their product, and it's like, "Yeah, thanks for that." But I have noticed every year there are more and more like us lot females going round, which is so nice to see. It's really good. Yeah, definitely. But there's still companies that blank you and just yeah. don't speak <laughs> to you, ones. which is a shame, really. Yeah, it is. I mean, especially I mean, it's another one I cross off the list yeah, not using their products. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's surprising that companies do that because I, you know. You don't want to turn away a customer, do you? I, I'm actually surprised that companies still have that attitude. But yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I mean, 
it's that assumption, isn't it, that they don't look at you and whether they just don't think you're a plumber because there is other females there that are there mm. for other reasons. But, yeah, when you're asking technical questions, you think they'd assume like, that yeah. you are a plumber. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have absolutely no idea about plumbing myself I, you know <laughs> so i'm in marketing i don't need i don't, I don't understand anything about plumbing really it, it, it took me until i started at thomas to know the difference of why does that toilet have a handle on it and why does it have a button and what the difference was <laughs> you know for anyone who's uh, who doesn't know at home if it's got a handle it'll be a siphon and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to sound like i know what i'm talking about now and if it's a button there'll be a valve in there of some sort um so i mean when it comes to sort of the products within the system which is what thomas Dudley really sort of uh, does um Thomas has been sort of looking to sort of develop more products on water saving wise. Have you seen that? I mean, especially for, for, for yourself being around, you know, 25 cents. Not that you're older or anything. Like <laughs> anything like but um, over the last sort of quarter of a century. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, have you seen that? That is used to water saving change uh, in that time. I mean, because when I was. You know, when you started in 87, I was leaving school. So it was, um, I'm joining the army. So it was um, the difference on there. But. Water saving wasn't something we thought about. I started in 97, not 97. 97. Well, sorry, I'm like, I'm 97. I'm like, not 35 years old. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I was just aged cars a whole decade now. I'm like, I can't be like old enough to be doing that long. You've got another 10 years no, on no, me. No, no, yeah, okay. I think, I, think we, I think we need to cut that. <laughs> from there. Yeah, let's cut that from the whole show. We can't really have a no in there. Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I joined so, yeah. the army ten years before you even <laughs> yeah. thought about becoming a plumber on there. Um, but but water saving wasn't wasn't anything that we thought about back yeah. back then. You know, I, I came from a time where we had no double glazing and a coal fire to eat the house, no central heating or nothing. Mm. So saving water by flushing the toilet. I mean, I think my nan had an outdoor toilet still. Or the room where the spiders lived is what, you know, we would be scared to go in there. And she, for some reason, she didn't use toilet paper. It was newspaper. In the outside <laughs> toilet, she had to cut up newspaper in the outdoor toilet. Wow, so this... Yeah, I, I know. So I'm showing my age now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't earn this grey by being young. Um, but yeah, so so has, do you, have you noticed that attitude to water savings change and how people sort of want their bathrooms to work or toilets to work? I think, yeah, I think since water meters have been put in people's houses they are more conscious um i've i think i've always been conscious i've always been one of these people that turn the tap off i've never had a water, water meter in my house right. but i've always been one of these people that turns the tap off when they're brushing the teeth and <laughs> i am not oh <laughs> i know i, think, I know I think I'm think it, comes, it comes Don't back. Say you're gonna have a mob at your door now <laughs> yeah. from here, yeah. back to that era you were just talking about when when i was a kid with dinosaurs um, and things yeah. <laughs> We had, <coughs> excuse me, we had a telly that we had to put 50p's in yep. to make it work. It was a rental telly and you'd put your 50p in yep. and you'd spin it and you'd get so many hours. Yep. Now, I every, like, yeah, it was like when the, when they come and emptied that, you'd get like a bit of money back and we'd be yep. like, yay, we can watch loads of telly now because, you know, money was tight. So yep. you put your 50p in and it had to last you, you had to be, so I think that taught me from a young age you know, turning lights off in property, like in the rooms when you're not using it and then um, not running water excessively. So I've always had that mindset. But I think, unfortunately, that people now have probably got it because of money and the fact that they are being billed for the water that they use. But I've changed quite a lot of toilet um, flushes because of the fact that they're passing through yeah. and it's made the water bill go up and they might not have even noticed it before that. Well, that's it because, I mean, uh, you know, H clearly has doesn't care about saving water by yeah, even running I the do. tap or cleaning the yeah. I'm already halfway through like doing my teeth and I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, tap. tap <laughs> yeah. So slowly I'm remembering, but just not from the start. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, it, it, I suppose it comes from it like as you know, I remember fifty pence is you used to, you put fifty p in the, the electric meter. I mean, they talk about now about if people get their electric cut off and how bad that would be. And we used to get cut off all the time yeah. because you'd be sitting and watching ten also <laughs> the house would go dark yeah. and oh, you got fifty p for the meter, mom. No, so you had to walk across the road, knock on your neighbour's door, Rose. If you got fifty pence for the meter, we can borrow <laughs> just so we can get the electric back on again. Yeah, yeah. But that was always a, like you say when the the, the gas the electric man came round, that was yeah. always bonus time because yeah. we'd add up how many. <laughs> yeah. 50 pences were there and give you so much back. Yeah, so it was like, yeah. oh, we're rich. So, yes, but in terms of saving water, um, how we do it there, I mean, I didn't care. We I mean, flushed the toilet once, twice, doesn't really matter. But I suppose when looking at it now, I suppose we, I asked a couple of guy plumbers earlier, um, was fixing toilets or the toilet was leaking something that was high on the priority of a homeowner. And they said it 
it can be, but the amount of times you'd go somewhere to fix another problem. And they say, oh, why are you here? Can you have a look at the toilet? Because I think it's leaking. Do you find that customers do that or do you think they're a bit more sort of proactive now? It varies really, doesn't it, I think. You do get some people that will want it sorted straight away. Um, but then you get other people um, that you mention it to. Oh, I've just used your toilet. I noticed it's flushing still. Oh, yeah, it's been doing that years. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm not bothered yeah. about it. You don't want to push yourself on to repair yeah. that. Well, I can repair that if you want. Uh, we'll leave it for a bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you a call. You know, some people just... They're just used to the noise. Yeah. Like the trickle in the night, you can just hear it. They're used to it. But then, yeah, some people are like, no, it needs changing. I mean, the amount of water that actually gets sort of wasted, I mean, it's, I think about 4% of the toilets are leaking any time in the UK. Oh, once. Really? Yeah, so I think okay. it's, about, it's about 4%. Um, some water companies will say it's 25%, but the Leaky Loo report said it was about 4 to 5%. So, four, four, say 4.5% four of toilets across the UK are leaking at any one time. That's enough water going down the toilet to fill. Four and a half million baths every day wow. of drinking water. That's mad. That is literally flooding down the toilets. And that's mad, isn't it? Yeah, and and you've experienced of people going, yeah, maybe I'll get it fixed, maybe I won't. I don't know. And it's usually the, the valve that's leaking or the inlet valve that's leaking, um, which can be fixed relatively easily. Mm. Um, I think because it's not leaking outside the toilet and it's not the pipe going in. Yeah. It's not a problem because yeah. it's just, they think it's just going in. So going in, you're like, yeah. it's done the leak. It's so a bit like, like dripping taps. People will just ignore them. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I suppose with dripping tap, you, oh, I'm going to turn it tight. Yeah. It will go yeah, off at some point. But, yeah. So, yeah. I'll better get that fixed now. But I a lot of the quarter term ones, you can't do that with and They'll just drip, drip, yeah. drip. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I suppose maybe if the water was leaking, because you used to have the out, external, I'm going to sound like I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm <laughs> talking about, by the way. With the, the external sort of overflow for the toilet, if it's leaking, it would flood outside. Yeah. And so you'd spot it quite a lot because it's dripping down the wall yeah now with the internal overflows it just goes straight down the toilet i suppose it's harder to spot at least initially for people um so i understand there is a, a way you can test the toilet if it's leaking which is putting the toilet paper at the back of the pan so i think if you dry the pan off and put a bit of toilet paper on the back if it gets wet then you know it's leaking or use a bit of blue um toilet duck Right, if okay. it goes obviously clear, it's leaking. Yeah. You know, you just put the duck round and it should stay all blue. But if it starts clearing off, you know, it's leaking down yes. there. I mean, I suppose your advice would be at that point, you need to get that fixed because it's costing you hundreds of pounds a year that you don't really see. Mm. And also wrecking the environment while we're at it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I suppose, I suppose the advice is if you've got a leaking toilet, if you've got a leaking toilet, get it fixed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you call in one of these two, they'll come yeah. and fix your toilet. Yeah. It's the way to go. Um, so, do, do sort of working with sort of Tom Stoddard and the other ambassadors, have you found that entertaining? Have you found that sort of worthwhile to do? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a, like, little, it's a good group. Little team, <laughs> Enjoy it? the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it's nice because when you work for yourself and you're out there um, doing your own thing, it can be quite a lonely job. So, mm -hmm. I think when you've got little groups like that, you know, you've got little people you can have a chat with and it just helps you get through the day really sort of thing yeah you're, you're, i'm assuming you're all very active <laughs> on social media yeah i suppose that's changed a lot over the last few years i suppose it's, it's opened up a whole new sort of world for people with the social media yeah yeah i think that's another way of having that sort of um the workmates as such when you're not got workmates social media is like your workmates because you chat yeah during the day we go on our christmas see... party don't we yeah <laughs> we're all <on> <laughs> yeah. um I suppose it has a bit of a negative effect as well because the amount of YouTube videos where, you know, yeah, oh, you can fix it by doing this. I suppose you're right you, out yourself. It's right out yourself, <laughs> yeah, I suppose, which is possibly a good thing, maybe not. I suppose if you come yeah, to a house where someone's actually had a go and made it worse. It's a bit like you say, people will have a go. Um, I, I hate getting them calls, though, where they've had a go and they can't do it and then they want you to come in <laughs> yeah. halfway through yeah. to fix it. It's that, like, that, that would be me. That, <laughs> that, that would be me. <laughs> Like, yeah, I can change the tap, no problem. No, oh, yeah, I can't do that tap on there. Can you come and tighten the tap? Oh, I just need you to tighten it up for me. I can't do it. It's surprising how many people don't actually know how to turn the water off in their own house, though. Yeah, that's, where that's it is. What, yeah, that's what surprises <laughs> me a lot as a plumber. And, you know, I've been, you know, you do it in your own, own house when something goes wrong. I've had a couple of um, burst flexi pipes and I've turned the water off. And I think, what would happen if they, that happened there? They wouldn't know how to turn the water off. It'd just flood. I suppose that's people think things just work. Yeah, and and and, I'm, and I've been guilty of this. I moved into a house. I was telling the guys earlier that I accidentally drove through the gas pipe. <laughs> He's laughing. Oh, <laughs> I can laugh now. It wasn't funny at the time. I blame my wife completely because she oh, wanted a wanted a shelf putting up in the kitchen. 
<laughs> next to the boiler. Oh, well, it's definitely our fault then. Clearly. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I didn't think that the pipes would run from the boiler that way. I kind of, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't give it a second thought to yeah. be fair. Where the, where well, you the would have, would you? No. So first lot of bra- screws went in, where they put the bracket on, not a problem. Second one. I was drilling, I thought, oh, there's a bit of resistance here. So I push harder on the drill to get that to go in. And as it pops in, it pops into the through. And then I could feel this. I've still got my finger on the, the drill. And I could feel this pressure behind the drill. And as I pulled it out, it was like, whoosh of gas. And I was like, expletive filled moment, which I won't repeat. Um, and then I just shouted to my wife, get the cat and get out of the house. We'd literally been in the place maybe three days. I, oh, I, I had no idea where anything was. Didn't even know where the gas was. So I had to bang on the neighbour's door saying, I've hit a gas pipe next door, you need to get out. Because I had to blow your house up. Yeah, by the way, I'm Mark, because you're a new neighbour. There with a fag. <laughs> don't, 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 don't light up, yeah. Uh, and then the, the neighbour told me where the turn off was, so I went out, turned it off, at which was I dialed 999 in complete panic at that point. So... No, I didn't know what else to call. So, I'm, so the, the gas man's coming out, the fire engine's on its way, there's me outside. Oh, I've, I've, I've turned the gas off now, I think it's all right. So <laughs> fire, the fire the, the fire man, he comes in, and literally there's a tiny hole where I drill through. Gets his hammer out, whack, 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 and makes a huge hole in the wall and went, yeah, you've got your gas pipe, and then left. <laughs> <laughs> and then Didn't I thought, oh, that's bear. great. So yeah. I then had to wait, get the gas man come out, sealed it up, and I had to wait for a repairman to come out and fix that. And I ended up with a huge hole that for the four years I was there was always a bit rough on the outside. <laughs> yeah. I didn't quite fill it properly when I was trying to fix it, but that's my wonderful DIY. So skills. the moral of the story is... I won't touch walls. Don't touch... Um, Pipes. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll put shelves up. I was going to say, don't put any Did the shelf shelves up? The end at all? Well, I'm not in there again. No, I mean, I, mean I, I, I bought one of those little stud detector things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I have no idea whether that's any good. It beeped all the time. So, well, okay, I'll just close my eyes and hope for the best. But, but yeah, well, I suppose DIY people, we, we, we can be great at doing things, but we can also be a complete disaster when we do things as well. And and you're the people we call to come fix our mistakes. Yeah. And whether that's, you know, it's going to cost me twice as much now because of the damage I've done. So I suppose the moral is really, if you don't really know, get a professional who knows how to do it properly. Thing is, it in a pipe. Anybody could do that. You know. Have, that you, was... uh, have you ever? I've not. No. Personally. Some... I did on site. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did that happen, H? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what? So I didn't do the first fix in the house. It was in a radiator. They used to use ten mil plastic, and he used to do like a loop. But on one of them, they told her to go sideways. So I was like, "It's in the loop. It's fine." I went sideways and straight in water <laughs> coming out, and I was like, "Oh no!" But yeah, that was not good. <laughs> to bash out the wall and everything, change the plan. I did uh, right. go to a job where they had in the downstairs toilet, they'd noticed some water under the um, radiator. And I looked and I could see it was coming down. So the pipes were running behind the radiator and coming out behind the radiator, the plastic pipes. And you could see the water was sort of coming down there. So um, I sort of looked up and there's a picture up there. So I took the picture off and there's a pin in and I pulled the pin out of water <laughs> just sprayed out. <laughs> So, yeah, they nailed straight through the water pipe and it was just trickling down. But, yeah, that was quite funny as I pulled the pin out. It's like, shh, I was like, oh, pull the pin back, back in. in. Yeah. That's one of the things you sort of see on a comedy film, isn't yeah. it? You don't expect to see that in real, I don't know, real life will I ever come across yeah. that. Someone's put a pin in there. Oh, that, that's a that's a brilliant story. You let that, that, that's a great story. I like that one. Was, was it was a picture? Was it a nice picture that was holding up? That could have been all the... Was it a family portrait? No, it was just a random picture that, yeah, that they put up. But, they'd um, yeah, I moved the told them to move it that way a little bit <laughs> put it up over cover the hole because <laughs> I had to cut out a little bit of a hole to put um, get a repair in so they then just put the picture over the hole <laughs> a bigger picture yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going the next time I'm leaving a bigger hole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife likes moving the, the front room I, I talked to my wife a couple of times in this podcast now she's actually going to kill me she likes to move the pictures around so there's, there's quite a few little holes dotted around the front room where there's little pictures have been moved around so can I put that there oh no I've got a hole there now to put someone else on there <laughs> Um, so, I mean, plumbing is an interesting sort of um, trade. I mean, uh, it's not something that I, I mean, I've looked at, the things I, I look at, what makes my life easy, is flexible tap connectors, perfect. I got fitted one of those. Um, but I had a go at soldering once, and that was the biggest disaster. I think I burnt my hand. I think I burnt my leg. So, I mean, do you guys do soldering? Can you do the soldering on the the pipe work because i think that's just that's that's a skill set that i could never have 
Well, obviously, when I did plumbing at college, I learned how to solder. And then for 22 years, I didn't solder once because I was mainly working on boilers, repairing them. I don't do installation. So, yeah, for 22 years, I didn't solder. So when I started working for myself, I had to sort of teach myself to it. solder again. Um, and I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with solder. Sometimes I love it and it looks amazing, but I do now press some... Um, I've got a press gun. You've gone so, to the side. Yeah, I've gone to the <laughs> other side. side. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, I'd much prefer. But press press is so much easier. It's safer, and I prefer that now. It's it's, it's a game changer. Definitely like lofts or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Are you any good at soldering? I do quite like it. Yeah, I do find it's quite more of a piece of art. Is that weird to say? But uh, yeah, no, I do appreciate a good soldering. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm terrible at most DIY things. I mean, I, I can do. I, I, I don't mind having a go, but the actual outcome is sort of hit or miss. Or whether I mean, I remember putting a, a new a unit like this on, on in the kitchen, and uh, I had to put the sink in, and you follow the instructions where you to draw a circle around the, the line. You have to take it so many mil in, and I must have stared at that for about two hours before I could sort of have the courage to put the drill in and then start yeah, cutting it yeah. out. So I thought, if I get this wrong. Yeah. That's it. It's done. I need yeah. a new one. That's like me in kitchen sinks. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, but um, I mean, I, I, I put, I, I did my whole kitchen, which I was quite impressed with. It's, it's not fared very well, but it was quite a few years ago. But, um, but we had our bathroom done recently and we had, had plumbers come in and I'll never do anything myself again because the, the brilliant job that got done was just, it made it look, you know, so much nicer than anything I could have done. But my bathroom fell apart when they took it apart because oh, it's yeah. that old. But when they stripped off the tiles, literally I think half the house came with it. <laughs> and luckily I was at work. I missed all this excitement. When I came home and my wife was like, you not believe the amount oh, of dust yeah. and stuff that came out. But the bathroom itself was like, it was, I was like, oh my God, all I wanted was a new bathroom suite. It just looked like a bomb had gone off in there. But, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how I many you... If you sort of started a job that you think is going to be sort of quite easy and then it turned into an absolute nightmare. Mm, I mean, I don't do um, bathroom refits. Or or even, even a boiler fitting, yeah, I suppose. Um, I tend to do the smaller jobs, but yeah, you do sometimes come across it and you think it's going to be straightforward and then it isn't. <laughs> yeah. It was like last night. I had to do a toilet last night. Did you? And I was like, just take my hand, look, hand luggage, hand tool bag even. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I was like, it's fine, I'll just nip it up. It was just the little nut under the toilet. I was like, that's all oh. I had to do. As soon as I n- tightened it up, tightened it up, tightened it up, it snapped. Oh, the whole thing just snapped, thread. yeah. And I was like, oh, this is not what I wanted. I had nothing on me. <laughs> so I'd be exactly to have a new, a new system or... Yeah. Oh, no. Well, just a new fit in, but yeah, it was one of those things you just think, I only came for like 10 minutes and I was there like ages. And I was like, this, is, this isn't the good. The thing is, I think when you do things like that, and like I repair a lot of toilets and it might be the flush valve that's faulty and the whole system has to come off but if it's a fill valve with a plastic um shank i know like brass every time they're, they're, <laughs> they're a nightmare so i replace the fill valve as well while it's stripped down because you've been there before where you've tried you've put it all back together tried to get it to reseal and you spend more time messing so i'd say yeah. to the customer i'm going to replace that as well the fill valve and put obviously a thomas studley yeah. Yeah. Shank. <laughs> obviously <laughs> shank. um yeah so you learn to um, sort of pre, you know, just avoid them things coming up because you've had it before and you've learnt from it, and you you, you do things a little, little bit different, don't you? Yeah, I suppose it's uh, it's, 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 it's every day's a school day, isn't it, when you learn to do little tips and tricks and. I mean, was it lefty loosey righty tighty and all I those kind of that. things? <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, so I, might, I, might, I think. Uh, I learned how to wire a plug up because, you know, blue, green, I don't know what colour they go on. So BR, bottom right, BL, blue, bottom left, and anything else, put it on the top. <laughs> so uh, that was how I was told how to wire a plug up. So That's all right if you know you're right from your left. Yeah, I suppose. And, 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 oh, and, that doesn't work, And you're not colourblind like my dad was, who wired up the plugs in the house and only tell us it was colourblind and we switched everything off. It blew literally half the sockets in the house, oh, which was uh, oh, useful. And he said, yeah, but I am colourblind. So what you could have said, we could have helped you out on there. But, but yeah, so I mean, I've, I've got a lot of respect for plumbers because it's one of those trades that you probably only call when you need them. Um, and then they come and do a job for you and then you realise actually how good people are um, when 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 they when they're very well at doing their job, even tightening the tap up, I struggled with tightening the taps up. And the guy just got there. You go. So, you know, I must have spent about four hours 
trying to bend myself around the toilet so I could get underneath and put the bath plug on. You know, that was an absolute, that was horrible. But is there any jobs that you really hate doing? Um, no, I mean, obviously it is a job where you have to get yourself in very awkward positions. And after 25 yeah. years, my body is knackered, basically. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like awkward baths to do taps and things, you know, awkward sinks. Taps that are like nightmare. along the wall. Yeah, you can't get anything no. in. Yeah. Yeah. And and obviously toilet waste, I'm not a fan of that. Drainage. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do yeah. that. No. Oh, so, I mean, I remember when we had our bathroom done, they, we, we, we were trying to think ahead, think, what if we need to change the taps? And the guy said, look, in the end, he said, look, don't worry about it. He said, if it goes wrong, the plumber will find a way to do it. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's like when they're, they're fitted on the, like you say, on the back wall and yeah. you've got like, well, there's no way I can change that without taking the bath out. Well, that's, you know, I, I have this problem now because to get to the bath taps, I'm going to have to take the whole toilet unit out to get the board oh. out to get to the. And I know, and we've had a floor laid while the toilet oh. was in, so I know that when those taps go, don't call me. Yeah, oh, yeah well. me. <laughs> okay, I am calling you, pair, both of you at the same time. You're going to go and fix my toilet, but I know how bad that's going to be, and yeah. I'm like, I'll keep saying, look, don't mess the taps up, don't mess around with them because that's going to be a pain when that the happens. The thing is, it's like everything you get people that install and people that maintain you also get people that do both if you do both you're conscious of that but yeah. if people just install and never maintain they don't think about the consequences of when things break the because they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah someone else's do, job yeah. to do yeah i suppose you come across that quite a lot when yeah. you come to fix something yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> um so regarding just on, on thomas dudley have you got any favorite products that you like from thomas dudley's range Anything that you were surprised that Thomas Dudley actually does when you actually came around to have a look? Um, well, I've been using a few different products from their range. I've um, got a stop tap that I'm going to fit. I was supposed to fit it last week, but the stop tap in the road, I couldn't get to it. It's all buried, so I've had to wait till they've had that sorted. So, yeah, things like that, that and, and radiator valves that I didn't realise they did, and, you know, they've um, the good quality stuff. So um, I think my favourites, obviously, the... the it's what they do best, the toilet products, yeah. you know, Total I think. Edge. Yeah, yeah. The, the siphons and the flushes and the fact that, you know, they've got this um, new bit that you can put on the flush valve to make it more compatible yeah. without the, the stripping. Valve, yeah. yeah, so I'm looking forward. I tried it the other day, but it didn't fit this particular one, but I'm looking forward to the day where I think, oh, I've got it to fit the system yeah, fits. Fits. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think terminology is a bit, can be, in each industry is quite unique in its terminology, um, you know, Double flush, single flush, outlet, inlet. Yeah, it all can be a little bit confusing. But the one that sticks in my mind the most, I mean, whether you come across this, is when we was looking at our product range and we had a product called a force cup. And I'm like, what's a force cup? And I was scratching my head for ages and I had something in it. It's a plunger. Oh. For some strange reason in this trade, it's called a force cup. And I was like, isn't that just a plunger? Yeah, but people call it a force cup. I'm like, just, well, I've learned something new today. Yeah, well, I mean, is there anything that sticks in mind from plumbing or heating that actually doesn't make or it doesn't make sense, or you think, yeah, that's a ridiculous thing that we call that? I use that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just fitting the force guys. You the force yeah. cup, but each industry is quite unique from that. So, I mean, I imagine that there's all sorts of with, with a gas boiler, there's all probably sorts of things that seem a bit odd. Yeah, within a gas yeah. boiler. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think. Um, Generally, yeah, you just you don't really think about it because you're in the trade. You don't think yeah. about the names of things because you work with it every day, don't you? That's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, well, I think we've I've really enjoyed having you guys uh, on the, on the show. It's been uh, Thanks it's for brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's been it's been a pleasure to sort of uh, sort of hear your stories and you know the uh, the toilet you know the, the no female toilets was something <laughs> I just didn't even think about would be an issue there you know and having to share the toilet with the uh, obviously the executive people who wanted yeah. a nice toilet to use um, but that's it's it's amazing how that um, potentially could have been a barrier to someone actually um, becoming a plumber um, or an engineer which is you know really strange that that basic sort of requirement would be sort of thing that might stop somebody it's very and I suppose you've got to be quite strong-willed to, to battle yeah, through that. Yeah, I think I think that comes um, with being a female in the male's world. Yeah, it? especially just... like working on site, you can't take it to heart. You banter, if yeah. they give it, give it back. 
Yeah. You can't just go home and cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> as hard as it sounds. I suppose that's a good way, you know, if, if they're having, if they're, they're chucking the banter, you chuck it back at them. And, right back, And, and yeah. to be fair, I think, they, <laughs> and I think they probably appreciate that probably most of them I in think terms I of that. I gained more respect on site because yeah. I gave it back rather than just like keeping it and just walking on, doing my own thing. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. That's cool. Well, um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure and I hope we can uh, get together again because I think it's been, it's been a great. So, um, so just to people, if you enjoyed the podcast, um, please uh, like and subscribe by pressing some weird buttons that might be around um, somewhere on the screen. Um, and you can follow uh, Thomas Dudley on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and X. And you can, if you want to check out your uh, what they, social media handles, whatever they might be, if you want people to come and follow you. Uh, Kaz Gas Limited on Instagram and Facebook. Pink underscore plumbing underscore HJS on Instagram. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the longest one ever, you know. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, I'll tell you, thank you to my guests, Kaz and H. Um, I got easier to get your name right this time. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just keep a lookout for the next episode of Dudley Unplugged. Um, this is Mark Morris signing off. Oh, oh.